Good morning. We shall now make a start. Greetings and a warm welcome to all our invited guests. From BSP, Mr. Mr. Christopher Gao, head of the talent management department, and Mr. Aitoa, who is a desktop network technician, both gentlemen at DWU, pardon, both gentlemen at Divine Word University alumni. From Lay International Hotel, Ms. Isabel Lecker, Human Resource Manager, and Ms. Lorraine Sariman, Sales Executive Officer, who is also an alumni of Divine Word University. From Deloitte, Mr. Jonathan Kabata is the IT Analyst with the Financial Advisory and Consulting Services. Ms. Ms. Gwyneth Ikupu is the Manager Tax and Business Services Officer. Mr. Max Manimbi is the Senior Analyst with the audit team. And Ms. Bonnie Henney, who is part of the Deloitte Graduate Program with the audit services. They are all alumni of Divine Word University. Ms. Catherine P. Schulz, Human Capital Senior Manager for Price Waterhouse. Welcome and thank you all for joining us. I would also like to make a special Special mention that we are grateful to have with us Professor Father Philip Gibbs, the President of Divine Word University, and the Dean of our Faculty, Faculty of Business and Informatics, Associate Professor Martin Daniel. And we also have the head, heads of departments for the faculty. To the staff and students, the, the live audience, tuning in via Zoom or Facebook, and anyone else who I have not made mention of, welcome and thank you for joining us today for our Faculty Virtual Career Expo. With the team running to excel in knowledge and skills to aspire, inspire, and win together. For the past three days, the university has had each faculty showcase the students and created a platform for interaction between students and industrial partners. Today marks the fourth and the final day of the event. My name is Amanda Mollard from the Information Systems Department in year four. My name is Jordan Yawa from the Tourism and Hospitality Management Department year three. And we will, will be, be your moderator moderators for, for today. today. Proceeding on, Pro Professor Father Philip Gibbs is, the divine, is a divine word missionary born in New Zealand. He came to Papua New Guinea as a student in 1973. He has worked as a parish priest in, in, in Anga province and a lecturer at CTI in Port Moresby. In 2016, he was the head of Department of Governance and Leadership here in Divine Word University. And in 2017, he became Vice President Research and Higher Degrees, also here in Divine Word University. He is well known as a researcher, a photographer, and a movie maker. Professor Philip Gibbs is currently the president of Divine Word University. We will now listen to the president's message. My name is Philip Gibbs, and I am president of Divine Word University in Papua New Guinea. Welcome to Careers Expo Week at Divine Word University. A Careers Expo is an opportunity for potential students to learn more about life at the university and also a chance to activate networks and engage with stakeholders and potential employers. It's a chance for the public to learn more about what is Divine Word University. 
After the recent experience with the coronavirus, we decided to continue with a virtual careers expo, utilizing the great resources we have here in information technology. It's with that modern technology that I'm able to speak with you now. For four days this week, faculties and other groups from the university will have an opportunity in webinars through Zoom and streamed on Facebook to tell you more about life here and respond to your questions. We'll be starting off with a virtual tour of several of the campuses, giving you a chance to look at some of the spaces and meet people you would experience here as a visitor. Divinewood University aspires to be a national university, open to all, serving society through the quality of its teaching, learning, research, and community service in a Christian environment. It offers a chance to those interested in improving themselves spiritually and intellectually so that they may become responsible citizens and contribute positively to the development of society. Students come from all 22 provinces of Papua New Guinea and from abroad, including Solomon Islands. The university aims to turn out graduates with the skills required for national development, as well as professionals who will provide Christian leadership for the nation. At the end of their courses, and for most that means at the end of four years, students attend a missioning ceremony with each final year student receiving a special missioning cross as a constant reminder of the transformation they will have experienced while here. The Vinewood University has a special interest in encouraging women to take an active part in national life and in improving the status of women in society. The university has four faculties, business and informatics, arts and social sciences, medicine and health sciences, and education. We'll be hearing more from the faculties during this week. The theme for this year, 2022, comes from our DWU motto. In the Latin language, sic curite ut comprehendatis, which means run to win or run to understand. From that, our theme today is running to excel in knowledge and skills to aspire inspire and to win together. That's our underlying theme for our Careers Expo this week. Again, welcome to Careers Expo at Divine Word University. On planet Earth, minus 5.2248 degrees south and 145.7911 degrees east, sits Divine Word University in the beautiful town of Medang province. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, on this virtual tour of one of the finest universities in the Pacific. We begin our tour at the entrance of the university. As you enter the gates, right before your eyes, is the state-of-the-art Friendship Library which was officially opened on the 29th of April, 2004. The library is the main research hub for staff and students. It comprises of two levels and houses resource materials dating back to when the university was an institution. Our next stop and just opposite to the library is the Alumni Park. The park and the immortal wall of alumni at the Medan campus was designed to be a way for all graduates to be permanently acknowledged, honored, or remembered here. The wall bears bronze tablets bearing the names of those participating in the alumni program. Tucked away in the corner next to the park is the Global Travel Services. Making life convenient for all, GTS provides flight information and ticket purchasing on campus. Staff and students do not need to go into town to the New Guinea office when service is at their doorstep. Just after the library, in this little office, is the engine room of the university that connects Divine Word with the rest of the technology world 
the Information and Communication Technology Office. They have the best team on campus to take on any ICT-related matters. You can be assured to get all your IT issues fixed here. If you are feeling a cold coming on or suspect malaria, the university's clinic comprises of reliable medical team that can help our staff and students. The Alessandro Clinic is opened Monday to Saturday. Three of the key venues on campus used for large gatherings and events are the SVD Main Amphitheater, John Paul II Hall, and Sir Peter Bata Mini Auditorium. The SVDMA also houses a sugary sweet hideout D Cafe at the end of the building. Just opposite to the student mess is the only BSP ATM on campus. Further up towards the end of the campus is the DY Mart that services staff and students daily. The university believes in balance with work, study, and leisure. This playing field caters for sports such as basketball, netball, volleyball, tennis, and rugby or soccer. The field also hosts one of the main highlights of life at Divine Word, the cultural shows. Another balance to throw in the mix of work, study, and leisure is the core foundation of the university, is its spiritual life. The chapel is an iconic structure symbolizing the Catholic faith and offering spiritual guidance for all other denominations as well. Finally, to end this tour, it is a very important building for students here at the Medan campus. This building supports students from their registration to their accommodations, to transportation, and everything student related. The Student Services Building also houses the Student Representative Council Office. This brings us to the end of our tour. For more information about the university and the courses it offers, visit our website or message us on our Facebook page or contact us on the details on the screen. Philip Gibbs for the message. Audiences, you just saw a short virtual tour of Divine World University Medan Campus. Now we will listen to a short message from the SVD and SSPS congregation.
SVD and SSPS congregation, the founders of Divine Word University. Proceeding on, Associate Professor Martin Daniel is currently the Dean, currently the Dean of the Faculty of Business and Informatics. Prior to joining the university in 2008, Associate Professor Martin Daniel worked with various companies and agencies providing consultancy work in area of information technology. He has worked in various projects and also manage projects funded by the government in the areas of training, curriculum development, and quality assurance. We will now have the message from the Dean of the Faculty of Business and Informatics. Good morning and welcome to the Faculty of Business and Informatics at the Divine Word University. I am Dr. Martin Daniel, the Dean of the Faculty. I provide leadership and coordinate planning for teaching, research, curriculum development, and administration in the faculty. We have five academic departments in the faculty. Departments of Business Studies, Information Systems, Computing Science, Tourism and Hospitality Management, and finance and management. We aim to produce quality graduates to be ethical leaders who are inquiring, entrepreneurial, and analytical, as well as capable lifelong learners who can contribute to the development of Papua New Guinea. We develop graduates in the areas of mathematics, computing science, information technology, business, and tourism and hospitality management. We offer our flexible blended programs at Medeng, Port Mosby, and WeWare campuses. We are now offering the same programs at Tabubul campus starting 2022. We are currently working with the autonomous region of Bougainville to offer the same programs in Boca. These are all part of our aim to increase accessibility and affordability to higher education for our people. We also offer our programs through partnership arrangements, such as with provincial governments, uh, tailored towards meeting their organizational and staff development needs. We make an extensive use of technology, including the Moodle learning management system, Facebook, Zoom, and other tools to deliver our programs and achieve our intended outcomes. We have qualified staff with the relevant qualifications knowledge, skills, and experiences who are committed to developing quality graduates in their various professional areas. We are grateful to our partners, including the Department of Higher Education, Research, Science, and Technology, the Bank of South Pacific, PricewaterhouseCoopers, the Australian Catholic University, Cisco Systems, Handong Global University, the Center for International Private Enterprise, and others who have supported us in many ways, including reviewing our programs, 
providing access to teaching and learning resources, and supporting us financially to implement some of our planned academic activities to meet the development needs and aspirations of Papua New Guinea, achieve Vision 2050, and contribute to nation building. For further information, contact us or visit our website. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you, Dean of the Faculty of Business and Informatics, Associate Professor Martin Daniel. Where does human behavior comes from? It comes from human perception. Where does perception come from? It comes from information received. Whether it's a personal experience, a newspaper article, Facebook post, WhatsApp status, or whatever, it is information received. So if you want to control the perception of the many, you control the information. Well, I'm not saying that I'm controlling the information, but in fact, we have more educational and job-related information for you. You will enjoy it. The outline of our program for today will go like this. We will have messages from the dean. Pardon me. We will have messages from the president, the SVD and SSPS congregation, and the dean of faculty, followed by live presentations for each department in the Faculty of Business and Informatics. Towards the end of our program, we will have a question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have come to the main highlights of our event. Let's welcome the presenters from the Mathematics and Computing Science Department who will showcase their skills and knowledge gained in their fields of study. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Department of Mathematics and Computing Science. Before we proceed on with our presentation, a short message from our HOD or head of department, Mr. Sassaro. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Department of Mathematics and Computing Science. My name is Mr. Cyril Sasaruo, and I am currently the head of the department. The mathematics and Computing Science course is revolved around mathematics, computer systems, and computational methods. We deliver a wide variety of units that teach students how to use mathematics to solve real-world problems, how to create software, how to develop algorithms for software, how to create and manage databases, and how to create and maintain networking infrastructures. With these skills, and after graduating from the university, there are a wide variety of employment opportunities that our graduates can apply for. They include to work as a software engineer, database manager, 
an analyst, computer security analyst, or even becoming a teacher to teach ICT or mathematics at secondary schools or tertiary institutions. To be eligible to apply for this course, you have to score a minimum of B grade in advanced mathematics, English, physics, and at least two Bs for two other courses. And you, you have to complete your grade 12 education. Mathematics and computer science course is demanding and challenging. And because of that, students must have self-discipline, time management skills, perseverance, and self-determination to complete the course. With that, thank you for your time. And I will leave you with my students who will do their presentations for today's Virtual Career Expo. Thank you, Mr. Sasaro. As stated by our HOD, in our department, we have three aspects we will be presenting today which are the programming, the mathematics, and the networking. Today, we will showcase one of the applications of mathematics and computing science in a real life scenario. For consistency, we have chosen a casino as our scenario. I, Rosina Umay, will be presenting the programming aspect of, or the programming application of well, in a casino, yeah. And my other fellow colleagues will present other, the other aspects within a casino. So let's begin programming in a casino. As soon as you walk into a casino, you get distracted by the lights and the sound of a slot machine. Today, My fellow colleague has designed or program a casino, a slot machine, a web-based slot, slot machine program. So here, as you can see, is a simple slot machine found within a casino. This is just a web-based program that my colleague has designed. So click start. Here, as you can see, there are three pictures which are stored within an array within the program. These pictures are found, uh, these pictures are assigned each numbers within an array. An array is just a basic container that holds these pictures. So as soon as I press the spin button, it won't work yet because I have not placed my bet. As soon as I press the spin button, it'll create, uh, it'll trigger a random function. This random function will generate numbers within that container, thus creating a spinning effect on these pictures. So let's go ahead, let's place a bet. Currently I have 10 kina within the system. My colleague has designed this functions which are for categories of bets, which are all same, two same and correct order. So due to time factor, I will just present one function, which is the whole same bet. Let's go all same, just a plain bet. And then I submit my bet. Now, as I press the spin button, it'll work because I obviously have placed my bet. So as you can see, the pictures are switching. This is because of the random function, which is triggered. So let me just stop it. Oh, you have lost all your money, so better luck next time. So basically, this is what we do, not just in a casino, I mean, applications of programming in a casino, but application of programming can be applied anywhere else. So before I take my seat, let me just introduce you to the next speaker, which is 
He's currently doing his fourth and final year as an MCS student. Please make welcome, Please Mr. Make welcome Isaac Mr. Isaac Nundrohu. Thank you. Sorry guys, um, <clears throat> everything around you is numbered. Everything around you is mathematics. Where there is mathematics, there is beauty. For the second part of our presentation, let me <clears throat> run through with you. To explain the mathematical concepts used in the, within the casino setting. As human beings, as human beings, as human beings, uh, as human beings we cannot deny beings, the fact that mathematics, that mathematics is used in almost every aspect of our lives. I know most of you dislike math, but let me tell you, Math is very useful. Math can help us to calculate. A math can help us to, to do many things that are important for our, for, for our own benefits. <clears throat> so before going into detailed explanation or um, about the mathematics used within the casino setting. Let me highlight some of the few importance of mathematics used in our daily activities. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> imagine, not imagine, when you wake up in the morning, you, when you wake up in the morning, you use math, when you wake up in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, you use math to calculate the ratio of sugar to add to your morning tea. That's part of mathematics. When you want to sleep, you look, when you want to sleep, you look to the clock in the back of your mind. You know, you know how many hours you're going to spend to sleep, to wake up, uh, to wake up before the next activities that await you in the morning. That's also mathematics. <laughs> um, to explain the, uh, to explain the basic math used in the casino setting, let me tell you a story about a young fellow, a young fellow by the name of uh, Peter Eastgate. So on, 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 the, on November 9, 2008, 22-year-old professional poker player Peter Eastgate defeated over 6,000 other gamblers and became the youngest player to win the main event at the World Series of Poker. 
for his achievement, he earned over 9 million in cash and a spot on the list of the highest earning poker players. If you are interested in the match behind this, please join me in the next slide. <clears throat> so this is the basic principles of the mathematics used by this fellow, this young fellow, who was able to win the amount, the 9 million. The basic principles are outlined here. Uh, define definite probabilities, expected value, and volatility index, and provided other equations. <clears throat> With that, um, With that, these are the mathematics unit studied within the Department of Mathematics and Computation. We, st we, st we are studying calculus one to three, probability and statistics, linear algebra, differential equation, mathematical modeling, as well as cryptography. Thank you, and that's all for the present. Uh, up next is Ms. Celiana Rupa. She will be presenting to you the networking uh, aspects of our presentation. Thank you. Now that you've seen how mathematics and programming have been implemented in a casino via games, you're probably wondering, how does networking come into play? Now, with all that being said, all these games involve money, as it is a casino. So with all these games, money is involved. And where it, there is money, security is needed. So with that, I will be showing to you how networking can come into play in a casino. To better understand the casino, the casino layout is break, um, broken down into five different areas. <clears throat> the parking lot, the entrance, the gaming area, public area, and CCTV center. <clears throat> Before we begin, apologies for that. Okay, back to it. So before we begin, there are a couple of things that you should keep in mind. To show, to show the flow of data and give a real world representation of the network, we have used the packet tracer software that offers an effective interactive environment giving a virtual, net, virtual reality of a network in the real world for exploration, experimentation and explanation of networking concepts and technologies. So what you have shown to you right now is the topology of the casino network. So you have monitors in the CCTV center, cameras in the parking lot, entrance, gaming area, and cashier and public area. We move into the entrance. The cameras in the entrance are for security reasons and to monitor movement 
in and out of the casino for face, um, facial recognition and capture. With the packet tracer software, the little envelopes that you see are data or other videos from the security camera that are being passed from the entrance into the CCTV center, which is the main center that monitors movement in and out of the casino. We move on to the parking lot. Now, we're all familiar with the recent trend of NRL betting. So like the casino, when you go, when you go and place a bet and you come out winning, you want to come out of the casino feeling safe. So that's what the cameras in the parking lot provide. And once again, with the help of Packet Tracer, you can see the flow of the data from the parking lot to the CCTV center. The third area, the cashier and the public area, is the main center for the casino where the monitoring of transactions take place and there is also an emergency button. So when the employees feel that they are unsafe or in danger, they can press the emergency button, which is then transmitted to the security in the CCTV center. This is again being shown by the flow of packets, the envelopes from the cashier area to the CCTV center. The gaming area, similar to the other four um, areas, packets of data or other videos are being transmitted from that area back into the CCTV center. Now the main area, the CCTV center, is where everything is monitored, all the areas, as you've seen in the past four sections, all the videos from the cameras are being monitored in the CCTV center. That's all for networking. And to conclude, you've just seen the flow of video traffic in the security network, mathematics via a card game, and programming being showed by the use of a slot machine. I hope that you've learned something with the aid of our theme, the casino. Do note that there are other real world scenarios that these three aspects can be applicable by. With that, that's just a glimpse of what we do in the Department of Mathematics and Computing Science. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the presentations. Well, that's the Mathematics and Computing Science Department. Interesting, right? Thank you, Mathematics and Computing Science Department for a very interesting presentation. Coming up next, we have the Information System Department with their presentation. Welcome, the Information System Department. Today, ladies and gentlemen, under the Faculty of Business and Informatics, there's a department called the Information Systems Department. Before we go through and demonstrate what the Information Systems Department does, we'll be having a message from our HOD. Ms. Marian Bagore is a IOS or Information Systems graduate 
alumni and has been serving the department since 2009. At the start of 2021, Ms. Marion Bagor was promoted to the acting head of the department. And in 2020-22, currently, she is the department head of information system. So thank you, and we'll sit back and listen from our message for the head of the department of information system, Ms. Marion Bagore. Thank you, Nigel. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Department of Information Systems. As Nigel have, uh, has already mentioned, I am the head of the department. Marian Bagori is my name. Um, Information Systems Department offers two programs, Bachelor of Information Systems and Graduate Certificate in Data Networking. Bachelor of Information Systems program aims to provide students with values, attribute, attitudes, sorry, knowledge and skills in information systems and technology and the management that will enable them to contribute significantly to the understanding and ethical management of the developing information systems and technology infrastructure of modern PNG, both within the OMO office and within large organizations. This program has a duration of four years of full-time study for a bachelor degree and uses a blended mode of teaching and learning. Uh, applic applicants are required to have completed the equivalent of four years of secondary education from a recognized educational institution. Applicants should have minimum grades of B in English, B in Mathematics A, and B in at least two other science or social science subjects from grade 12 PNG secondary school level study. The program has clear career pathways for undergraduate students. The IS career pathway is an organizing tool for um, IS students that provides a context for exploring career options and a framework to le link learning to the skills and knowledge needed for future success. Introducing students to broad career pathways and numerous um, occupations within each pathway expands possibilities for students and motivates them. The second program that is offered by the department, that is the Graduate Certificate in Data Networking, it aims to provide to the PNG workforce a steady stream of highly qualified graduates who are not only capable of working in the expanding IT industry, but who additionally have a solid grounding in the theoretical frameworks which underlie that industry. It focuses on the area of information technology known as data networking, which supports electronic communication from local area network, lands to wells, wide area network, up to internet upon which communication for modern life depends on. The program is offered through flexible learning center and most of its, uh, of its course contents and materials are provided by Cisco Academy. Um, this program consists of four Cisco Academy uh, modules and has a duration of four semesters, part-time study with 14 weeks online mode and one week bootcamp using face-to-face -face mode of instruction. Applicants will normally be required to have completed a re related undergraduate degree program involving four years of post secondary education or equivalent from a recognized educational institution. Appropriate indicators of success in related undergraduate degree programs would normally be minimum grades of B in English, B in Mathematics A, and B in other two science or social science subjects from grade 12 PNG secondary school level study.
Thank you. And that is all from me. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations from the department. Day once again, ladies and gentlemen. We, the information systems today, will be doing a live demonstration about an information system. This presentation will be used to highlight the various skills that is studied in the course and will also help to give you an insight to the various components that go into make creating an information system. In today's world, we have become so dependent on technology to perform everyday lives or everyday activities. From withdrawing money from an ATM machine or buying a trick in a right cloud data plan or even booking an online ticket for an airline. As these are some of the interactions on a day-to-day -day lives that involve an information system. So let's take into account an ATM machine. So everyone here, I believe, has access to an ATM machine. Otherwise, where would you get your money? So yeah, so this is one form of information systems that we interact with in our day-to-day -day lives. So we have the input end of the information system. So in an information system, we have four main core processes that occur. We have the input, the processing and storing of data and outputting of data. Okay, so let's go back to the ATM concept here. So the input is when you approach the ATM, you put in your card and you enter your PIN number. This is your sending information into the ATM. This information is then transferred over a network. And then it goes to a central database system where your details about your account balance or your transactions, history of deposit and withdrawals are being stored. And after that, when this information is being processed, it sends that all that information back to the ATM. And from there, you can view, oh, this is my account balance. Oh, so now I have that amount of money so I can withdraw money. So this part of the process is what we normally call the front end. Basically, the front end of an information system, in our terms, the ATM, is the end where the end user or us, the customers, interact with the system. What is happening behind the background, we cannot see like the processing and storing of data, it's what we call the backend of an information system. So behind the backend, you have no idea what is going on. Everything is automatically done by the system. So yeah, this is just one example of the many day-to-day -day activities involving an information system. So yeah, as you can see from the slide, you access the ATM machine, it then travels over a network to a central location in BSP or what we call a data center. And then this information is being transmitted back to you and you withdraw your money. Okay, so that's a very common system that everyone uses. But today, what I have here right in front of me is a simple temperature monitoring system. So in what situations or context would you require a simple temperature monitoring system? Let's think about it for a second. Let's look at our healthcare industry, for example, 
when you're storing of drugs or medicine, these are quite sensitive items, and they need to be stored in an optimum temperature, or they risk becoming faulty or defective. So, with this simple temperature monitoring system, we can deploy it in a particular room, and it will capture temperature readings, so we can know that the drugs or medicine that is being stored in that particular room is stored at the right temperature, so the medicine or products wouldn't become defective. Okay, so this is my simple setup. So what I have here, so remember, going back to our previous slides about the core processes of an information system, the first one we have is input. Well, in our case, there is no human interaction with the system for collecting temperature centers, uh, temperature reading or measurements. This data is automatically collected by the Arduino, Arduino temperature center. So the Arduino basically, you can think of it as a computer. But apart from our complex computers we use, the Arduino is a computer that is programmed to perform a limited number of functionalities. So basically, for our case, the Arduino here is programmed to re master temperature readings and process it and stores it in a database. So that's the input part of this system. Then we have the storage. So basically, this laptop is running what we call a database. So every temperature reading that is occurring or that center is speaking has to be stored somewhere. So for us to be able to process and make meaning or make information about these readings. And then the last of it, we have the output. So this part of the system allows us to interact with. This is basically a web application that connects with our database and retrieves those stored information and creates a graph for us. So we can make meaning and say, this is the particular reading of the system. So now I'll be demonstrating this simple temperature monitoring system. So right now, as you can see from this graph that is being generated, is the real-time temperature reading that is right now being collected in this room. So from the graph, I can say that the temperature reading of this room is about 20, 25 or 26 degrees Celsius. So with this kind of system, we can help make predictions about real-world situations or we can be used to effectively monitor a particular area. So what you are bringing right now is the front end of our system. The back end of the database, we don't get to access that. We are only viewing it through a web browser, and this is what we call a web application. So ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, our lives today is very dependent on technology. And we as information system students are at the forefront of it. Many innovations are happening because of the skills and courses that we study in this department. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you learned something about how information systems work. Thank you.
attention on uh, really intriguing but one of them is um, networking and that's where i see that i i see myself in so i really like the idea of how information is passed to networks and, uh, you know how uh, information in this day and age is passed from one end to another so um, it, it really really puts me attention it intrigues me but right after uni i would really like to take up any job which is it related or not just to get me up and then with you know in time and with the proper knowledge and skills gained from these few jobs i would like to um, come back and focus more on the networking field and work on the in networking department in any organization as a networking system department for the very wonderful presentation live audiences and online viewers this is now time for break we'll take a break after the break when you come back we'll continue with the next segment of our program at 10 35 thank you you may take a break
Welcome back to the Faculty of Business and Informatics Virtual Career Expo 2022. Before the break, we had the pre presidential message, the SVD and SSPS congregation presentation, the faculty dean's message, and the presentations from the Mathematics and Computing Science Department, along with the Information Systems Department. For those joining us on Facebook, or on Zoom, or have just joined us here at SPVA, welcome. We shall now proceed on to the other department's presentations. People will forget what you say, forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. A quote by Maya Angelou. For the Department of Tourism and Hospitality Management, Students are taught to prepare to both provide better tourism, provide better tourism services through competent management, and also develop a better tourism world. Please put your hands together and let's make welcome the Tourism and Hospitality Management Department.
Thank you, Jordan. Good morning, everyone, including those that are watching us live. The tourism and hospitality industry is centered around people. That is, people moving from their place of stay to other destinations for the purpose of recreational activities and, of course, professional reasons. Divinement University, as a place for higher learning, recognized Papua New Guinea's potential for tourism. Therefore, Therefore, in 1998, 1998 it, introduced it introduced the program, program called, called Tourism, Tourism and Hospitality and Management. It first, it first started, started with a diploma, diploma program. program. Then, then in 2006, 2006 the, the diploma program, program became a fully-fledged bachelor, bachelor program. program. The program, program offered at Divine Wake University is robust as it consists of models or units from other departments, which presenters coming after me will further elaborate on. Students are taught to be event coordinators, as well as tourism and hospitality researchers, who must be strategic and analytical, which is important in policy making, as well as solving problems. Hence, with a robust bachelor, students are employable not just within the industry, but other sectors of the economy as well. The university encourages students to conduct themselves in a way that is not to offend society by emphasizing on ethical and moral values. The Tourism and Hospitality Management Program continues to improve itself by adhering to the changing needs of the industry. And this is done by involving our stakeholders who play a major role in us when we update our program. Students that are enrolled in our program also have the potential to advance their qualification to a master's level not just in tourism and hospitality, but in other qualifications such as marketing, human resource, and other qualifications involving social issues. Despite COVID-19, tourism is still one of the promising non-extractive industries in PNG, but lacks high quality and competent professionals to respond to its operational challenges. Therefore, Divine Med University continues to offer a program that will address the ever-changing issues and concerns in the field of tourism and hospitality, ever mindful of the important part and the contribution that tourism, that tourism plays in the economic growth and the development of any nation such as Papua New Guinea. The program in itself it is, is designed in such a way that it emphasizes on sustainable concepts, sustainable concepts in all its dimensions. So how do you apply to this program? Divine, Uni Divine Wood University, Faculty of Business and Informatics, and the De Department of Tourism and Hospitality is open to all. For school leavers, we require a B average. For non-school leavers, at least an A average with two professional references. Non-school leavers are also encouraged to have experience, that is work experience from the field. Students that intend to apply to this program are encouraged to have good communication skills, not just spoken, but written as well. Because with this industry, you continuously deal with people on an everyday basis. With this, again, welcome to the Department of Tourism and Hospitality, and stay tuned and listen to the rest of the presenters from the program. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elijah Pukari. I am a second year student studying tourism and hospitality management here at Divine Wood University. I am someone who admires the idea of travel and tourism. 
having to visit new places and experiencing the different cultures and traditions of different places. I chose tourism and hospitality management mainly because I wanted to understand the behavior, understand and familiarize myself with the behavior of tourists and what exactly influences them to different destinations or foreign destinations. When I first arrived here at here at Divine Word University, I was faced with a couple of challenges, certain challenges in fact. The challenges for me was mainly getting used to the university's daily life and the different unit codes and room codes used in its timetables. Also using different softwares in my academic work as well, the biggest challenge for me was preparing for presentations and doing them in front of an audience. My message to poten potential students is that tourism and hospitality management is not just about tourism or hospitality or management work. It is a multidisciplinary program and there is a lot more that you can learn and not just the three. In addition to that, the exciting thing about the program itself is you get to have a first-hand experience of what actually happens out there in hotels and resorts while still undergoing studies here at the university. With that being said, I would like to introduce our next speaker, who is a final year student, student studying tourism and hospitality management, Mr. Kevin Repina. All right, good morning, everyone, those who are watching live on Facebook page, Zoom, and those who are at SV channel. Thank you. My name is Kevin Krapinai. I am a final year student from the Department of Tourism and Hospitality Management under the Faculty of Business and Informatics. In my presentation, I'm going to give you an overview of how Lessons are conducted in the Department of Tourism and Hospitality with information system used in the Vanwood University. I will also explore how and what I have learned in the department during my four years of studies in the Vanwood University. The, the, the Department of Tourism and Hospitality is one of the five, uh, five departments in the Faculty of Informatics and Business. And it has two sectors. It is tourism and hospitality sector. However, we also have uh, management principles units that are, uh, that are also taught and assessed with the support of the information system. So teaching and learning in, in the class and in practical are student-centered. You will have group discussions. You will have research and presentations, case studies, and of course you will have role plays, plays. In the first two years of your studies, you will do practical at Medang Resort. As part of your practical lessons, you will be engaged in front office, restaurant, and rest include the kitchen, housekeeping, and the entire uh, environment of the restaurant. Also, you will have field trips, excursions, tour guiding. On the previous video, you saw a tour guiding practice. And you will also have site visitations. One of the recent achievements of, uh, of the department is the trip to Mount William. As a final year student, I have developed and acquired skills and knowledge in tourism management, hospitality management, business management, business accounting, 
Christian and professional ethics, information system and technology, development and planning, management, and the most important thing is leadership. I am confident as a final year student that when I graduate with the bachelor degree in tourism and hospitality, I am capable of working in a tourism and hospitality industry sector and business sector. Thank you very much. With my presentation, I would like to invite one of our third year students who is going to give you a brief display of what we learned. Uh, Hello again. Hello again. My name is Jasper Woktamol. I am a third year student taking the Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. As a tourism and hospitality management student, it is important to know how to calculate daily hotel statistics at a management level. Daily hotel statistics includes occupancy percentage, average daily rate, and the revenue per available room or FPA for short. Calculating daily hotel statistics are important for as managers to assess room sales and assist in decision making for the organization and for room sales and revenue. As you can see, Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties. We'll fi get that fixed and co right, come back right to you. Thank you. Displayed are two tables. On your left are the data that has been collected for the number of rooms available for sale, the number of rooms in the hotel, the number of rooms sold to guests, and the amount received from guest for rooms. To the right, these are the calculations that will be explained. Firstly, the percentage of occupancy. Calculate the percentage of occupancy. We take the 
number of rooms sold to guests divided by the num of number of total rooms in the hotel. So we have Two thousand five hundred divided by three thousand, which gives us a percentage of eighty-three. Secondly, Apologies for that. Secondly, the Saints pay occupied room. We take the number of dollars received from the guest and we divide it by the number of rooms sold to the guest. So we have 70,000 kina divided by 2,500. And that gives us a total of 28 kina. Thirdly, the sales pay available room. Take the total amount of dollars received from the guest for rooms and we divide it by 3,000, which is the number of rooms available for sale. So we have 70,000 kina divided by 3,000, and that gives us a total of 23 kina, 33 toel. On to the mathematical check. To confirm the previous calculations, we take the ADR, or the average daily rate, and we multiply that by the occupancy. So we have 28 kina multiplied 0 0.83, and that gives a total of 23 kina, 33 toel, which confirms the previous calculation. These are the answers for the statistics that have been done. Hotels use a system software called the Property Management System, or PMS for short to cater for administration and reservation tasks. An example of a system software used by hotels is the Biston Hotel Management System. I will go through with you on how to make a reservation. On the top, these are the tools that are used to enter guest information, room types, the beds, rates, and the services. This system can also produce reports, such as occupancy report, in-house guest report all the way up to the taxation report. Now this is how we make a reservation for a guest. Firstly, we choose the status, so he is checking in. This is how we choose a guest who's already been inside the system, his name and details. So we go with Mr. Joe Blow. Then we move on to the room allocation. So he is traveling alone and he would like to stay in a budget room. So we select a twin cell. It can be categorized under a budget room. And we add his payment. So he has a total payment of 350 kina. He's paying with cash. And then it, an additional of 10% GST will be added to his payment. And there we have it. There's a reservation for Mr. Joe Blow.
So now I will produce a, an, an electronic receipt for Mr. Joe Blow to be presented to him. Electronic receipt will be displayed for you to see. This hotel system can be used by anyone who wishes to join the lodging industry. It's more comfortable and makes the task more easy for the users, for the owners of uh, someone who's trying to enter the lodging industry. So hotels use this reservation system and they do away with using reservation forms or dockets or even guest folios to make work more efficient. So this is an example of an electronic receipt that will be provided to Mr. Joe Blow after his payment. Thank you, that is all. And now I would like to introduce our second speaker, pardon me, our next speaker an alumni and a current lecturer with the department. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Ms. Helen Gimbo. Good morning once again especially to our year four students, viewers on Zoom and viewers online on FB. My name is Helen Gimbo, and I am currently a lecturer in the Tourism and Hospitality Management Department at Divine Red University. I graduated amongst the second cohort of students in 2009 of what was then the Diploma in Tourism and Hospitality Management course and is now the Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management program. As an alumni of the program, I will briefly share my career journey, some tips for students when applying for jobs to start off your various careers or career pathways, potential employers of THM graduates, and I'll conclude with why I personally appreciate the THM program. Firstly, apart from my teaching career of 12 years at the department, I also worked as the training coordinator at Holiday Inn, Port Mosby, and as learning, senior learning and development officer at the PNG Ports Corporation Limited head office in Port Mosby. My industry work experience was mostly in the human resources division. After four years of industry experience, I returned to DW to continue my career in teaching. In 2016 or 2016, I pursued a master's degree in international sustainable tourism management course at the Monash University in Melbourne, Australia, and I returned to DW to continue teaching. Yes, our program is recognized internationally. On my second point, having worked in the human resources divisions of two different organizations, I have observed that people are applying for jobs every day. Therefore, here are three tips that I would like to share with you students to keep in mind when applying for jobs to start off your various career pathways, because you will be doing that soon. Point one, or the first point, when you are applying for a job, ensure that you present yourself well in your written documents. Ask yourself, what would make your letter stand out amongst so many other applicants? Second point, do your research about the organization that you are applying to, to show that you are genuinely interested in the organization. And the third point, prepare yourself well. 
if you are invited for an interview so that you make a good first impression. On to my third point for my speech this morning for potential and current THM students. The Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management program is unique and it can take you places. I would say that the be beauty about the program is that you can create your own path in either the tourism, hospitality, management, or related sectors. Having taught in the department, I'm happy to say that some of my students are being engaged or ex-students are being engaged as are being agents of change in the tourism industry. Our graduates are working with the Tourism Promotion Authority, National Airports Corporation, the Melanesian Tourist Services, and New Guinea, Nest Fund, BSP, Lay International Hotel, the Coral Sea Hotels, Holiday in Port Mosby, Digicel, and many other institutions around the country. Some of the THM staff here at DW are graduates of the Bachelor of the THM program, while others are teaching at Kokopo Business College and Medellin, College, Medellin Technical College, just to name a few. Furthermore, it was pleasing to see a THM graduate accompany the PNG Trade Expo team recently to Dubai. When it comes to entrepreneurship, a graduate of the THM program has now started his own tour operations business in the East New Britain province called the PNG Tour Guide. To conclude, as an alumni of the Tourism and Hospitality Management Program, I appreciate the fact that this program is well aligned with Papua New Guinea's national development goals, specifically the Vision 2050 for the sustainable development of our country. Thank you. Thank you, Tourism and Hospitality Management Department for your wonderful presentation. Proceeding on, we will have the Department of Business Studies. When I say business studies, what comes to your mind? As for me, what comes to my mind is, if opportunity doesn't knock, fill a door. I repeat, if opportunity doesn't knock, fill a door. What that means is, if you do not have a job, create one. The Department of Business Studies is designed to equip students with fundamental and contemporary knowledge in business and upgrade their analytical and behavioral skills required in building and managing an organization. Please put your hands together and let's make welcome the Department of Business Studies. Good morning, all. Good morning, in online viewers, students, staff, and the host. Before I proceed to my presentation, we'll have a message from the head of our department, Mr. Osli Wara. Uh, thank you to thank you to moderators and uh, BS BS rep. Uh, good morning, future future students, industry partners, and everyone who have joined us virtually. I as mentioned, I am Mr. Kosliwara, the current head of the Department of Business Studies. Uh, basically, Business Studies Department is one of the five departments of the Faculty of Business and Informatics. Uh, we are the biggest within the faculty, meaning in terms of full time programs, apart from our three sister sister departments. Uh, what it means is, when I say big, means we have uh, big intakes, intakes of students every year. 
Uh, basically, we have two programs within the department that we offer, uh, the Bachelor of Business Accountancy and Bachelor of Business Management. Uh, the students come in at first years and second years, both of them, all, all of them take the, the introductory uh, units together from year one to year two. When it comes to year three, that's when we, we do the streaming. And upon the streaming, we break them into those who major in accountancy and those who major in uh, business management. At the moment in South Australia, there's two programs. Uh, we're hoping that in the near future, we will involve, uh, include a uh, bachelor of business in economics, hopefully soon. Uh, in our staff within the department, uh, we have a very qualified and experienced academics or lecturers that comprise the accountants with, uh, with CPA qualifications. Uh, we also have economics. Uh, we also end uh, business, man business management lecturers with uh, who holds bachelor's as well as a master's degree. Uh, this, this, this academics, uh, most of them not only have the, the skills in teaching, but uh, they've come from industry, meaning that uh, they have quite vast experience in the industry in terms of both accounting and business management as well as economics. So when they teach the, teach the programs within, within the department, they not only teach it towards the theoretical perspective, but they try to incorporate uh, practical experience of what is actually happening in the industry in terms of those two programs that we are offering. Uh, our minimum, minimum requirement of entry into the department, uh, we get students with A's on only A's and B's, uh, basically means language, uh, all the social science units from, 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 from grade 12, uh, secondary level. Uh, those students with uh, A's and B's. Uh, the, the two uh, pathways that we have within the department to, to take in students are uh, non-school leavers and school leavers. Uh, for school leavers, those who come through grade 12, who finish from grade 12 with good marks, uh, we get them through online selections. And these are the ones that only uh, meet our requirements. Again, due to the demand in the, uh, in, a, in the program every year, we only get the ones that are with the A's, uh, the marks with A's. Uh, those with C's and some B's are left out uh, because of the demand, as I mentioned earlier. And the other pathway is through non-school leavers. Uh, non-school leavers are those ones that do finish studies. And uh, maybe because of some reasons, they did not make it through, but uh, they were able to go back a year or two to upgrade the marks, uh, basically to put the marks up to the standard where the department, department required, requires. So when we put out the applications through our registrar's office, uh, we put in all the requirements. So when you, if you're interested or those who are interested, can look through the requirements and submit the application as, as required by the application so that we can screen through and uh, we see what we can do to accept uh, to come in and study or if you do interest in, uh, in business studies. Uh, to our students, our final year students, especially finalists, uh, due to the demand in business studies, uh, every year uh, before the second semester ends, uh, I, I would say that it's one third or if not half of the students are being employed through graduate programs by various organizations. Uh, they come in through graduate programs. Uh, our students apply for it, uh, especially those ones with good marks. Uh, those were able to give a contract or be hired while still in studies before semester two ends. So they sign a contract to say that as soon as the study ends, the next year when they finish, uh, the, the academically no longer students, they start a, a greater program with uh, various organizations. Uh, within the department, we have a very good working relationship with industry partners, uh, to name a few. Uh, we have price with our school boss, Deloitte, uh, KPPMG, uh, BSP, Oak Teddy, Nest Fund, National Airport Corporation, uh, Microbank, Bank of PNG. Now, these are industry partners that support us through delivering our programs in terms of one way or the other. Uh, when we have department uh, uh, programs, uh, symposium and uh, other events that we within the department, we write to the industry partners. Uh, they come good to, uh, to support us in funds. Uh, good funds are being supported to us for us to run, through, uh, run our programs within the department for the benefit of our students. Uh, to the job opportunity for our graduates, uh, most of our business students, as I've mentioned earlier, most of them finish, uh, those have finished the programs, are currently working as accountants, uh, business managers, chief financial officers, CEO, general managers, HR managers, uh, sales and marketing managers, procurement managers, uh, project managers, some are even partners at accounting firms as I speak, uh, and not to, not, to, not to forget, successful entrepreneurs. So basically, as they go through year one to year four, they build the skills of becoming an entrepreneur. So when they finish the program, they go out and self-sustain to, to create employment opportunities, not only for their family and themselves, but for others uh, as they can. So yeah, basically, this is what we do in, 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 the, in the business studies department. And uh, those future students who want to join us, hopefully you have good marks for it, you can be able to join us. That's it from me, and thank you.
My name is David Ira, a final year student major in accounting. I will be talking on what I learned and what is expected of students before graduating from Divan Red University under the Department of Business Studies. So Business Studies is one of the largest departments under the faculty of the FBI of the Faculty of Business Studies and Informatics in Divan Red University. So what the courses are. We begin our adventure in Divine Red University by studying numerous foundation courses. This course include Accounting Foundation 1 and 2, Business Communication, Information System, Business Ethics, Business Management Principle, Business Statistics, and principle of economics, which mostly provide us with a fundamental understanding of what the main business studies areas are. Furthermore, all students must take business ethics to learn the value of being a responsible and moral business person. Also, during our foundation year, it is compulsory for all business students to take information system unit in order to be digitally literate, to be able to adapt to the current technological era. What are lecturers like? Our lecturers are very interactive with students in terms of they encourage teamwork and idea sharing. They also have contacts with businesses and alumni to maintain network, thus creating a bridge for business students final year when applying for job and GDP programs. Our lecturers are very experienced as most of them have been in business industries. So most of the theory that have been taught in class are relating to the practical aspect of what we are to face in the business world. What are students like? We, the current business studies students, have built a bond not only professionally, but also develop the concept and idea as a family. Thus, if we, if any of our colleagues face any sort of losses or challenges in their career part of problems, family problems, we tend to help our colleagues in whatever means or ways we could. Also, the students in business studies, we believe in teamwork and we are very cooperative when it comes to sharing ideas and achieving the goal that is good for the all. What I like about business studies, both students and lecturers are very cooperative in achieving a common goal, and that means academically and socially. What I learned in business studies. So before coming to Divine Red University, I thought that business studies is all about buying and selling. I repeat, buying and selling. Well, after my three years, and now currently in my fourth year, Divine Red University taught me business that it is not about buying and selling only, but it is also effective communication. It's about tax. It's about taking risk, being strategic in planning, create employment, seize opportunities, and meet market needs. I'll just give you a brief scenario on what I mean on brief meeting market needs. So PNG, uh, digital PNG company, it was launched in 2007. Once it was launched, they had this promotion of buy one phone, get one phone free with the lowest amount of flex card rate of Fikina where during that time, 
B Mobile was selling their mobile phones to a pricing of 200 kina plus, and the prepaid card for 20 kina, 50 kina, and 100 kina. So how is Digicel meeting the customer need? You might be thinking. So Digicel have found out that in PNG, we are developing country, and to meet the target and the demand, they have to put the prices according to the income level of every individuals in the country. And at the same time, they have established a network connection all over PNG. That is why they boomed within a very short period of time. That is meeting the market needs in business studies. So one of our strategy. So what I personally learned that the basic concept of business studies is to know what customers want and fulfilling that need to the fullest. So what is expected of students before graduate Personally, as a major in accounting, before I graduate, I am expected to be equipped with a better cumulative GPA, skills such as critical thinking, software skills, teamwork, public speaking. Taken some sort of leadership roles in the university, been flexible and adaptive, use professional code of conduct in the workplace, and have a very organized time management system. So what I wish to leave with others, to those potential students and those students who are currently studying at the Vanward University, I urge you to have a high cumulative GPA participate in extracurricular activities <clears throat> such as sports, academic writing, or Toastmasters, and build a good professional relationship with your colleagues, lecturers, for network building in the future. So before I take my seat, I would like to introduce our next speaker, an alumni of Divan Red University, Mr. Nigel Totona. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, the viewers online and our business partners. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nigel Tolona. Mm, I graduated um, in the year 2020. It's my second year in the workforce this year, 2022. Uh, I graduated with the Bachelor in Business Management. So currently I am working as a tutor now in the business department in Divine Wood University again. So I will be talking about the change as a student to an employee to, a, to an employee and a different expectations that comes and also what the student should do now in preparation for that stage. Okay, firstly, I will be talking about my transition from a student life to a work life or becoming an academic. As that's, current, uh, that's currently my work right now, an academic. So as a Divine Bay University alumni, the transition from a student life into a working life was currently very challenging at first. But as I was able to adapt myself, I found it more, much more enjoyable. As I came to, uh, to meet new people, and I was introduced to many, many things that I didn't, I didn't know that I, I was going to be introduced to. As a student, the things you learn in class uh, what gets you a job? You must know that. I, re I repeat myself, the things that you learn in class are the things that get you a job. But the things that you learn during your time as a student in, re in regards to your extracurricular activities are what makes you stand out in your job and what makes you shine in your job. In my four years as a student here, I was able to study 34 units, eight units per, per year, and one unit per semester. 
Even though all the units were very important, in order for me to complete my studies as a student, only few were practical in my life. I used, it, I used them in my day-to-day -day life during my job. But as this study is my from doing, I, I would like to take this time to say the, the privilege that we had as business study students to undergo one particular subject, that was business ethics. Business ethics talks about the way we conduct ourselves in the workforce among our peers and also when living our everyday lives. It makes us as students and now as employees to be ethical into our day, in our day-to-day -day dealings. Business ethics as a standard, set the standard for most of us business graduates from DW to excel in our professional careers in setting very high ethical standards in our workplace. Also, in our day-to-day -day life, we were able to attract good company among us and also attract people to see us as potential managers in their particular area of work. Now let me talk about the extra curricular activities that will make you shine when you're in a job or when you have a job. As a student, we, were, we also engaged in other extra curricular Particular activities that has helped us a lot. The Oenberg University has so much promoted or encouraged extracurricular activities. Those activities include uh, sporting activities, academic, academic activities such as debate, uh, open day, uh, business symposium, genetos masters, and many more. Also, provincial club activities. With all of this extra work in place, students were able to do studies and also take part in those programs and club activities. As I look back, I see the great importance of it. Being involved in those areas have really made me to be open to others and learn from others as we work together and accomplish things. One thing stood out with me when I started my job was the importance of networking and connecting with others. If I were only to concentrate on my academic studies and not be able to take part in other extracurricular activities, I would not be able to connect with other people when I came to start my job and be able to be open-minded in learning from others. This is one mistake that many young graduates have. Many young graduates have a misconception that, that they think that after graduating, they will find a job automatically and given that they have a degree paper in whatever business uh, qualifications that they have, they will make them, they will promote them to a higher place. But that's not the reason. But that's not the, the main reason in companies or organizations. As business graduates, when you go out, you will start from the very bottom. You will have what, they, what they call trainers, mentors. These are the ones that they teach you. This is the way of the organization. Whatever you learned, you put them aside and you submit under what experience that they have and you are able to put it into place. That way you can carry forward in your time as an employee. That is why I stress the importance of social skills and being able to connect with others and accomplish tasks that are at hand. In conclusion, I want to emphasize that you will be open-minded when you are as a student and be able to build your social skills. For those are the main factors that will help you survive in a working environment. And please be able to involve yourself in extracurricular activities, as well as just your studies, and be able to manage your time well as you accomplish both of them. I repeat myself, and I want to say, please involve yourself in activities such as genital masters, debates, sports, class presentations, business symposium, and many others. They all teach very important life skills, which are namely communication, teamwork, punctuality. When you go out in the workforce, your managers will look to those things. If you don't have punctuality, if you don't have teamwork, you will be a threat. You will not make the organization move on. So I encourage you right now as you are, be able to op be open-minded, learn from each other. So when you go out there, you will be able to accomplish more. Thank you very much.
everyone. My name is Carl Senims Kerge, and I'm undertaking business studies here too. Business studies is flexible and it has many job opportunities in PNG and my future career. I want to be an accountant and it is the solely main message that I do to development because development produces the best accountants. My name is Raven Onaba. Uh, why I decided to take up business is because uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur in the future. Uh, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to have the knowledge and understanding of the business world. So that's the passion or the thing behind me why I want to take up the business. James, I'm a third year of student. Uh, the reason I took up this course is because uh, these days everything we go to our business and in order for us to make uh, better decisions, we need to have a uh, better knowledge on uh, business study in the campus. So uh, in the future, I want to be a business leader. My name is Martin Thomas and I'm from Tariq. I decided to take business studies because my dream job lies in uh, my in the business that is the fact I want to be an accountant in the future. Yes. Accountant are my role. Live audiences and online viewers for the 2022 Ivan University Visual Career Expo. We just saw the Department of Business Studies. Thank you, Department of Business Studies, for the wonderful presentation. Up next, I would like to introduce to you the head of department for the Department of Finance and Management, Mr. Otto Erwa. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thank you, host and uh, moderators there. And hello to everyone out there, colleagues and viewers around the country and elsewhere. Um, I, as introduced, am the head of department for the finance and management department. And I wish to uh, start by giving an uh, just an overview of a perspective of where we are uh, in terms of the department here. Uh, you have already listened to the other five departments and uh, the faculty. Um, the business studies department has finished information systems, mathematics, science, computing, tourism, and hospitality. They're all full-time departments uh, within the faculty and they have had very interesting um, uh, programs and uh, the students and also the uh, partners and all. Uh, the finance and management department uh, is actually uh, the fifth department uh, in the faculty and we are a flexible learning department. And the flexible learning uh, programs, uh, we have uh, these programs running here, six of them. Uh, uh, two master's programs, uh, a bachelor program, and we hope to introduce two more bachelor programs, uh, incorporating the diploma programs below. And uh, but at the present time, we have just a single bachelor program, and we have three diploma programs running here in Medang and in uh, other campuses um, in Pom, uh, Pom campus, in Uwe campus, and soon in Tabuville. Um, campus. Um, in terms of the uh, program um, programs we run here, the flexible learning programs, these are basically uh, 
programs that are tailored to the working class uh, in, P in PNG. Uh, most of them, the working class uh, will be constrained by resources, especially finance, and also the time uh, because of their work uh, schedules to uh, undertake full-time studies to um, um, increase their knowledge and skills and all that. So we, uh, the, the, the flexible learning programs are tailored for the working class people. And um, in saying that, most of our students would uh, are also um, employed. Uh, the programs are structured uh, like um, flexible learning, meaning uh, there are two weeks on campus here for residential sessions or face-to-face uh, -face sessions. And then the balance of the semester, uh, they're all learning teaching and learning is facilitated through the use of uh, Moodle, a learning management system and other technology um, throughout the semester. And along the way, there are uh, assessment tasks and all that. So that's how the programs are uh, structured, uh, residential component and, and non-residential. Um, our graduates, we, the programs are designed to equip our graduates with uh, contemporary knowledge and skills uh, and tools to uh, uh, that are directly applicable to the workplace uh, situation. So, in other words, our graduates, um, the units are also the units in the programs are also work related, and, and the graduates upon graduation are work ready. I would say if you can uh, take that, that they are work ready, that they, uh, much of the knowledge, skills and tools they learn are, are directly applicable to, the, to their workplace uh, situations. And uh, many of the students, while they are undertaking the studies here, or as soon as they finish their, uh, they even write back to us or they inform us that they are either promoted or um, been, um, yeah, um, those kind of success stories that their students uh, relay back to us. And so uh, uh, that's how our, uh, some of our, you know, students that they report back to us. Um, in terms of our, uh, partners there, uh, I mean, sponsors, major sponsors of our programs. We have only, uh, not only, but to name one, uh, just a few, BSP uh, or Bank of South Pacific is a major sponsor of our programs. Um, and also Octedi Mining Limited, Newcrest um, in the private sector. And we also have um, uh, government sectors like, um, I mean, government state-owned enterprises like PNG Power, Telecom, uh, PNG, and um, a few others, the police department, uh, the CIS, and those are uh, some of the uh, sponsors of our programs, our students in our programs here. Um, we have this, uh, the, the, um, uh, the programs running in other campuses, and uh, I uh, am sure that uh, they are um, ready to give you more information about our program. So I will let it uh, off to the, um, the other uh, campuses here, but thank you uh, for listening. And uh, hopefully uh, those uh, uh, audiences outside uh, of the DW, hopefully we can connect later through our programs um, in the future. Thank you. Uh, for the message. Audiences, please sit back, relax, and enjoy a short video from the Department of Finance and Management.
The Finance and Management Department is one of five academic departments within the Faculty of Business and Informatics. Unlike other departments within the faculty, the Finance and Management Department offers flexible learning programs. These programs are designed specifically for the working class Papua New Guineans who have little to no opportunity to pursue their educational qualifications, given their demanding work schedules, as well as the very competitive nature of external aid-funded scholarship programs. These programs are on offer at various campuses around PNG, including Port Moresby, Wewak, and Tabubal. The Diploma in Management is designed to prepare students to be managers and leaders. It equips students with the essential knowledge and skills to manage people and organizational resources and to achieve personal and professional goals. The program offers units relevant to developing creative and analytical skills to manage their roles in the ever-changing work environment. With the growing trend towards globalization, public sector reform and government incentives to boost SME development, it is essential for employees to acquire management skills to take a greater leadership role within their employer organizations or even take initiative to start up SME. The Diploma in Business Studies is designed to equip students with fundamental and contemporary knowledge in business and upgrade their analytical and behavioral skills required in managing an organization. The program endeavors to supplement the student's practical knowledge with well-founded concepts for those who desire to attain a degree in business-related fields. With the growing trend towards globalization, public sector reform and government incentives to boost SME development, it is essential for students to acquire business skills to take a greater leadership role within their organizations or even take initiative to start up SME. The Diploma in Human Resource Management program is designed to develop competencies in students for human resource management roles with fundamental and contemporary knowledge necessary to manage people in organizations in the 21st century. The Bachelor of Management program is designed to equip professionals in public and private sectors to manage and lead organizations into the future. The program delivers strategies to build the students' capabilities to become skillful managers in diverse work environments, manage people harmoniously and productively, and work both autonomously and collaboratively. It equips students with knowledge and skills to think ethically, critically and reflectively, demonstrate professional values, and solve problems in a variety of settings taking local and international perspectives into account. The Master of Business Administration program aims to enhance the knowledge, skills and attitudes of senior and executive managers in the public and private sector organizations in Papua New Guinea, to support their efforts towards sustainable development of the country. The Master of Leadership in Business Administration MLBA, program caters for interests of applicants in business, public and private sectors of the PNG economy. The MLBA program is for business and management leaders in the 21st century. It addresses the needs and demands of organizations in Papua New Guinea for a greater quality of work and life that require managers to be good leaders who are honest and committed and able to create an organizational culture that enables and empowers people to bring out the best in them for the good of society. Thank you, Business Studies. Pardon me, sorry. Thank you, Department of Finance and Management, for a nice presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning. Thank you for tuning into the second segment of our program. We hope you enjoyed it so far. For now, we'll take a break. We'll take an hour for lunch, and we'll see you back at 12:35 in the next last segment of our program. Thank you, you may go for lunch.
Have you ever thought about applying to study at Divine Mart University? Then Divine Mart University may be the choice for you. We offer a range of programs that you can be able to choose from. Say you may be interested to study programs in theology, business and informatics, medicine and health sciences, education, or even arts and social sciences. Most of Divine Mart University programs are done in full-time study mode. But we do also provide programs that can be done in flexible mode for people who are currently employed. If you are worried about location, do not despair. We have specific programs run at our campuses located in Medan, Rabaul, Port Moresby, Tabubil, Wuiwek, and in Mount Hagen. Diploma holders graduated from Divine Ridge University or other recognized institutions can apply for degree studies if they wish to upgrade their qualification to degree. We have three categories of applicants that apply to Divine University. These are current grade 12 students who will apply through the national online selection process administered by the Department of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. Non-school leavers, past grade 12 students wishing to further their education in a tertiary institution. Working employees, eligible for flexible learning programs, diploma holders who may want to upgrade the qualification to degree. We are now accepting applications for non-school leavers who wish to study full-time in 2022. The non-school leaver application round for 2022 will close on the 31st of August 2021. The non-school leaver application form can be downloaded on our website. The website also contains information on how to fill in the application form. Current grade 12 students should check the National Online Selection application through the Department of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology website and read carefully the program information across all institutions and their eligibility to apply for the program of their choice. Interested current employees can choose from a range of programs from the Flexible Learning Center. Please contact us on 422-2937 or why not check out our official website www.dwu.ac.pg for more information on available programs offered at the primary university. Beginning of a journey is always the toughest. There are so many things you are unsure about. Then you meet friends, which become family, and you create a bond for a lifetime. Welcome to the journey to the Business Studies Department. So business study department is one of the uh, departments under the faculty of business and informatics. Uh, basically, we graduate uh, accountants and business managers uh, who come out of the department to become managers out in the industry. Uh, all areas, all sectors of industry, meaning both private and public sectors. I want to be an auditor. We want to be auditors. Uh, after completing my studies, I want to be a financial. I want to become a certified practicing accountant. 
I want to be a tax accountant. In the future, I want to become a CEO. Uh, in the future, I see myself uh, making BSP. In the future, I want to become a chief finance officer. Divine Word University Open Day is an event that is held annually. The business department is part of the Faculty of Business and Informatics. The business department takes this opportunity to showcase to the community, the future students, and to stakeholders what the business department is all about in terms of learning, teaching, and the overall outcomes of the business studies department. Business Ethics Symposium is an annual event hosted by the final year students of Divine Word University. The Business Ethics Symposium Committee invites various guest speakers within Medeng and other provinces of Papua New Guinea with business backgrounds to come share their experiences with the business study students on the work ethics in the field of business. Give tips to students on how to carry themselves during their time here in Divine Word University. Give guidelines on how to behave ethically as a business studies student aiming for success in the future and also stress more on what to expect after graduating. Department of Mathematics and Computing Science. My name is Mr. Cyril Sasaruo and I am currently the head of the department. The Mathematics and Computing Science course is revolved around mathematics, computer systems, and computational methods. We deliver a wide variety of units that teach students how to use mathematics to solve real world problems, how to create software, how to develop algorithms for software, how to create and manage databases, and how to create and maintain networking infrastructures. With these skills, and after graduating from the university, there are a wide variety of employment opportunities that our graduates can apply for. They include to work as a software engineer, database manager, and analyst, computer security analyst, or even becoming a teacher to teach ICT or mathematics at secondary schools or at tertiary institutions. To be eligible to apply for this course, you have to score a minimum of B grade in advanced mathematics, English, physics, and at least two Bs for two other courses. And you have to complete your graduate education. Mathematics and computing science course is demanding and challenging. And because of that, students must have self-discipline, time management skills, perseverance, and 
some determination to complete the course. With that, thank you for your time. And I will leave you with my students who will do their presentations for today's Virtual Career Expo. That's where I see that I, I see myself in. I really like the idea of how information is passed to networks. And, you know how uh, information in this day and age is passed from one end to another. So um, it, it really, really puts my attention to intriguing. But right after uni, I would really like to take up any job which is highly related in more time, just to get me up from here. And then with, you know, in time and with the proper knowledge and skills gained from this, few jobs, I would like to um, come back and focus more on the networking field and work on the, the networking department in any organization as a networking field.
My name is Carl Senius Kerge, and I'm undertaking business studies here too. Business studies is flexible, and it has many job opportunities in PNG. And my future career, I want to be an accountant, and it is the only main message that I think to development because development for this is the best accountants. My name is Raven Onopal. Uh, why I decided to take up business is because uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur in the future. Uh, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to have the knowledge and understanding of the business world. So that's the passion or the thing behind me why I want to take up take business. James, I'm a career college student. Uh, the reason I took up this course is because uh, these days everything we go to our business and you help us to make uh, better decisions. We need to have a uh, better knowledge on this uh, study in college. So uh, in the future, I want to be a business owner. My name is Dr. Thomas and I'm studying. I decided to take business studies because my dream job lies in uh, my in job lies in the business that is the part and I want to be an accountant in the future because accountants are my role.
right, ladies and gentlemen, to come back to the Federal Bureau of Justice and Finance, which was the Red Expo 2022. Before the break, we had presentations from the Tourism and Hospitality Management Department, followed by Business Studies Department, and also the Department of Finance and Management. In this final segment, we will have presentations from our faculties, industry partners. Without further delay, I would like to make welcome our first industry partners representative from the Bank of South Pacific, Mr. Christopher Gao. He's the head of talent management within the Human Resource Division. Good afternoon, everyone. Can can you hear me? Uh, all right. So as the moderator mentioned, my name is Christopher Gao, and I am the head, head of uh, talent management here at BSP Human Resource. Um, before we get into our presentation, I would like to thank. Uh, Divine Word University for recognizing BSP uh, to be part of uh, your career, career expo program. And we are happy to be here and uh, might, we should provide you some insights uh, from BSP as to uh, the requirements we need uh, for uh, future employees at BSP, including uh, current students at uh, university, universities like yourselves. So um, without further ado, I will um, share my uh, presentation. I have a presentation that I'll be sharing. Uh, and um, so this, my presentation outline will be take, uh, taking you through what BSP is, about BSP, career opportunities at BSP and uh, including the graduate development program. I will also showcase, uh, not showcase, but uh, we have a list of uh, former graduates that we are proud uh, to show uh, Divine Word University and how graduates can apply uh, to, to BSP. And so without further ado, I will ask um, Ari Strides Aitoa. Ari Strides is a former graduate of Divine Word University um, from the 2020 cohort. And he has been with BSP for, for one year now, and he's currently, he currently holds the position of a desktop technician within our um, IT, our information technology business unit. And so Ari Strides will take you through uh, his experience and uh, the opportunities within BSP, uh, especially to, to motivate the current uh, graduates at Divine World University. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Chris. All right, this is our outline for our presentation. Uh, we'll go through a brief insight about BSP, uh, the career opportunities at BSP, the graduate development program, uh, examples of the one graduates doing well at BSP, and how can graduates apply. All right, a brief insight into BSP. Uh, BSP is a power unit bank. Uh, BSP just celebrated its 20th anniversary since the privatization in 2002. Uh, BSP has operations across the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Uh, BSP employs more than 4,000 plus staffs. Uh, those staffs are managed right there in Papua New Guinea uh, at Port Mosby. Uh, BSP has the largest branch network in the countries which it operates in. Uh, the countries are Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Tonga, Cook Islands, and Vanuatu. Uh, BSP has 300% owned subsidiaries. Uh, they are BSP Capital. Uh, BSP Capital involves stock broking and funds management. 
uh, BSP Finance uh, is a specialist asset finance company and BSP Life. Uh, BSP Life is a specialist life insurance company both in PNG and Fiji. All right, this slide talks about the opportunities uh, at BSP. Uh, there are two types of employment opportunities at BSP. Uh, the first one is the annual graduate development program. And the second one is direct entry. Uh, direct entry can be broken down into uh, two types. Uh, the first type is letter of interest sent to BSP. And the second type is applying for vacancies advertised by BSP. So these are the two types of employment opportunities that BSP provide. Okay, there are a wide range of opportunities that exist in the different business units in BSV. Uh, the career opportunities can be found inside internal audit, legal, operation risk management, information security, finance and planning, treasury, marketing, retail banking, brands network, Paramount Banking, BSP Finance Limited, corporate banking, information technology, operational risk, anti-money laundering, and compliance. So, you can find career opportunities in those different business units in BSP. All right, down to our graduate development program. Uh, this slide talks about what BSP wants in our graduates or what the graduates must have in them. So developing our young people to be the next generation of leaders is a part of vision to be the leading financial service provider in PNG, service provider in the Pacific, in the Pacific, sorry. Uh, BSP has endless opportunities for graduates with the right attitude that wants to start a professional career. Uh, BSP focus is to develop, nurture, and enhance a high performing culture. So therefore, graduates must have the following attributes. But these are the graduates, uh, these are the attributes that BSP is looking for in graduates. Uh, the first one is be confident. Uh, having confidence and a strong sense of commitment towards achieving results. Okay, the next one is be a team player or having the ability to work in a team environment. All right, the third one, a high level of communications. So BSP is looking for graduates that have good verbal and written communication skills. All right, the last one, demonstrate leadership ability and potential. Uh, that includes uh, reps in classes, uh, group cultural or provincial group reps and denomination reps. With those attributes, uh, BSP tend to create a pool of individuals that are trained to develop and who have the potential to move into key positions within the organization over time carry on the business continu continuity and growth. Okay, this slide. This slide contains the examples of development graduates that are doing well at BSP right now. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, BSP is filled with a lot of development graduates, but we cannot get all of them down. Uh, it will take two or three more slides, so we just only Pick the selected ones. Um, we chose the graduates inside our three different disciplines, uh, BS, MCS, and IS. All right, you can see, I'll just go through the list very fast. Uh, John Taka, Business Accounting. Uh, Robert Amolu, PNC Studies. Uh, Natasha Lagani, Business Accounting. Judith Mizel, Micheli, Mathematics and Computer Science. Uh, Christopher Gao. Uh, business management, uh, Janet Sate, business accounting, Emmanuel Oreri, information systems, uh, Christopher Kila, information systems, John Nori, information systems, Ruth Vela, mathematics and computer science, and Rex Makusia, mathematics and computer science. So these are some of the many graduates that are doing very well in BSP right now. All right, the important part of the slide presentation, uh, how can graduates apply? So keep an eye out for advertisement of graduate development program that will be coming out at the end of May, 2020 and will run for two weeks. So the requirements to apply are cover letter, two written reference. Uh, the reference can be from two department heads or one 
Reference can be from the school and one can be outside example, the pastor of your denomination. Okay, the next one is copies of school certificate of transcripts. Uh, one point about the transcripts, uh, if you are sending up the application through email, uh, and if you are sending the different semester transcripts, uh, it is good that you merge all the transcript into only one PDF file before sending. Okay, then you have the CV, uh, your CV should contain your personal data, qualification, work experience, work experience, if any, from companies, community or voluntary, uh, your CV should contain your career aspirations or career goals and your current contact details. So either DCL or by the current numbers they are using. Uh, one more thing, uh, you should be vaccinated. Uh, the application should have your vaccination card also. All right, the application can be sent to the head of talent management, uh, Mr. Christopher Gao, PO Box, 78 Port Mosby, NCD, or could apply through the email jobs at bsp.com.pg. Uh, for more information, uh, you can visit our website at PNG, BSP PNG, uh, www.pngbsp.com.pg, careers slash graduate development program. So this is how graduates can apply. Right, this is the end of our presentation. Uh, we'll take questions. Uh, during the question period. Uh, if my colleague wants to add more on the question. slides. We'll talk during the question. All right, he said we'll talk during the question. So this is our end of our presentation for BSP. Uh, thank you and we are looking forward for your questions during the questions and answer time. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Lekha. 
Unfortunately, we cannot hear what you're saying. To the audience at SPBA and also on Facebook and on Zoom, we're having technical difficulties, but we'll get that fixed up and we'll be right back. Ms. Lekha, can you hear me? If you can, please do test your microphone. Ms. Lekha, if you can hear me, please show a thumbs up. Thank you. Please check your microphone. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Sorry about the delay. I apologize about the delay cost. I apologize about the delay cost um, on my end. 
On behalf of the International Hotel, I would like to thank the Council of Business and Informatics for giving the International Hotel an opportunity to partake in this program. The on-the-job training, the first question, the career opportunities your organization provide for graduates. At the International Hotel, we start with uh, the on-the-job training as pathway to our career opportunities. The on-job training period is between four to eight weeks, depending on the school requirement. We have engaged students from various institutions last year, and we engaged about 20 students from the tourism and hospitality courses from different institutions here in Leith during the first period from December to January, first week uh, this year. The students were given uh, FOC staff meal and allowances for the house for the housework. And uh, we actually took on board uh, some of those students that completed their um, casual work period. They're, they're now working as a full-time employees for the International Hotel in various um, departments. We have the housekeeping department, we have front office department, um, the functions, um, kitchen, accounts, um, HR, and the IT. So that is the career opportunities um, that our organization provides for graduates. We actually um, start as um, on-job trainees. So move straight on to, sorry, I don't have a display of um, screen to show you, except if you have, if you have uh, notepads or virus, you can just take down notes. I'll move right on to uh, point number two, how graduates uh, can apply for such opportunities. Uh, firstly, look out for um, job vacancies that are posted on our Facebook uh, page or on um, the newspapers. And also, depending on our job vacancies, graduates may apply to any area that interests them. The recruitment team will do screening based on individual job vacancy requirements uh, that have been posted. Having a certificate, a diploma, and degree in tourism and hospitality management is a must in applying for the hotel jobs. Also, with the on-job training, uh, we have the schools writing into to us to engage the students at a certain period. For example, we do have Goroka University Tourism and Hospitality students. Um, they travel from Goroka down to Lake to do their job training or to do their own job, um, job internship. This is arranged uh, through the Department of Tourism and Hospitality Management. The school pays for the student allowances um, and their accommodation at convenient locations here in Lay to reside and travel back and forth to, you know, to work, to do their internship. We, as a company, only provide uh, training engagement and issue job training certificates at the end of their training program. So the training engagement usually takes um, from four weeks um, to six weeks, depending on each school requirement. So after the students uh, do their training, they, um, they usually write back to, to the hotel where we rotate them in departments, different uh, departments during, during the training period from uh, kitchen to food and beverage uh, to housekeeping, even to accounts and HR. So the students get a feel of the actual work um, when, they, when they do their training. So when they complete their, their studies, they apply to which, which um, departments that, that interest them. So it's entirely up to the individual um, student to, to apply to the particular job that interests you or fascinates you. I'll move right um, on to point number three, which is uh, providing examples of graduates doing well in your industry. We currently, we currently have two graduates from the Tourism and Hospitality Management GP program. Uh, one is uh, Lauren Sariman. She was uh, from the class of 2008. She is our sales and executive uh, manager at the moment. And the other is uh, Michelle Kilimbe. 
She graduated in 2017 and she is our business center coordinator. There is a third one also, but uh, he's no longer here anymore. So the current staff we have that graduated from Divine Word, uh, both doing very well in their work, reflecting the knowledge they have gained during their studies at um, Divine Word University. We, we have plans to engage them in management and leadership training, which I'm working on with the HIA to tailor some training as per our needs um, analysis, but um, otherwise uh, they're doing well. So that's uh, my point number three. I'll move um, straight on to point number four, which is uh, what your organization expects from our graduates in terms of knowledge, skills, qualities, and, and attitudes. As graduates from one of the best institutions in our country, and from the tourism and hospitality management course, our organization has a high expectation from the graduates um, from Divine Red uh, University. They have to lead by example because most of our employees recruited here are from the certificate and diploma courses uh, from, from the institutions um, in Lay and in Papua New Guinea in general and of course from other business and accounting fields because we have also an account um, finance department or accounts uh, department. So we also get students from other, other study programs as well, not just the tourism uh, programs. So we have other departments uh, that do not require a degree graduate, but uh, grade eight or 10 or even school level as long as the applicant is willing to work at entry level positions and learn while on the job. So as you can see, um, the difference between um, graduating from a degree course from Divine Word University and to work along with uh, grade eight, grade 10, or even the grade um, 12 school level. So we expect um, the students graduating from degree courses to, to, be, to be the examples within, within our organization. So so that um, the other employees can look up to them as, um, as, a, as the leaders. And customer service skills is uh, very important in hospitality industry as we deal with customers and guests every single day. Product knowledge and communication skills are also vital. So there is productivity and efficiency in, in every area. So you can study as much as you want in, uh, in the faculty that you're studying at the moment. Um, that's one thing um, theory, but um, applying it in practical is, is, is another thing. So we want to physically see the, the attributes that you gain from, from your studies uh, displayed in, in the organization or in the companies and to, to build the confidence to, to serve the customers that and the guests not only face to face, but over the phone uh, when you're answering calls. Um, these two girls are doing very well in that area, answering calls, doing bookings, getting back to the to the to the clients, to the customers uh, via phone. Because customer service is not only not only through um, face to face that that customer that you are serving um, physically in front of you is just as uh, important as the, as the client or the guest that is on the phone as well. So they're very good. They're very fast on their communication on, on phone and the computer, doing bookings, doing scheduling. Uh, very, very important because if they cannot follow up, if they cannot communicate, then we lose customers. When we lose customers, we lose business. So that's the underlying point. The International Hotel, also expects a positive upbeat attitude from the Divine Red Tourism and Hospitality graduates portraying quality output of work. So attitude is uh, very important, although uh, not all the schools offer that, that subject, but it is one of the important things that you have to take note of in applying to organizations that um, your attitude matters at work. 
whatever attitudes that you portray at home in school, we expect that same attitude, that same positive attitude um, to be at work also. So you, you can influence those um, other people um, that did not graduate at a level that you graduated from. So that brings me to the end of my uh, short presentation. Thank you for having the International Hotel on a career expo. And I hope the information shared here is helpful. On behalf of the hotel, we extend our best wishes to all the current students in the Faculty of Business and Informatics for this year. And we also commend the support team and the lecturers of Divine Word University. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all our current staff and managers for their support to our on-job training students. They are an essential support to our on-job training programs. Together, we help build a strong employee base with the right skills, knowledge, and attitude required for achieving our organizational goals, objectives, and our mission, because uh, we are committed to providing an excellent customer service to our guests. Thank you to having, for having the International Hotel on board your program. Sorry, before I hand this uh, presentation, I did not introduce myself. So I've been asked to introduce myself. My name is Isabel Leha, and I'm the Human Resource uh, Manager for the International Hotel. I'll meet you on the other side of the question and answer segment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Isabel Leka, for the message shared. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we have some technical difficulties with Mr. Jonathan Kabata, our guest speaker from Deloitte. So he will not be able to join us today. We will continue with the next segment of our program. Thank you. We have almost come to the end of our event. I would like to thank all our guest speakers. I would also like to thank the staff and students of each department for the showcase of your respective department. We will now move on to the Q&A session. For those participants on Zoom, you can now enter the break rooms and interact with your chosen industry partners, which are BSP, Lay International Hotel, and PWC, Pricewaterhouse. For the audience here at SPBA, Mr. Aitowa from BSP will be will join us via Zoom to, to respond to any questions we may have. Again, I will repeat to those participants on Zoom, you can now, mainly the students, you can now enter the break rooms to interact with your industry partners. So the audience here at SPBA, Mr. Mr. Aitowa, from BSP will join us. Hello, Mr. Aitoa. Can you hear me? Does any student have any question for BS? Anything about the graduate development program? About the working environment there? So 
sorry, it's Mr. Gao. Mr. Gao will be joining us. Students with any questions? Mr. Gao, can you tell us more about the graduate development program about the graduate program of BSP? Thank you. Um, I'm sure um, my presentation was very uh, brief. So I'll, I will just run through, uh, well, I'll take you through the, the program itself. So the graduate development program is focused on uh, young leaders, uh, stu uh, current students who are motivated in, uh, and especially leaders. We are looking at out for young leaders motivated to come in and uh, take the bank forward into the future. So uh, the, the graduate development program is a 12 months program uh, where our graduates come in uh, from different uh, backgrounds or study study backgrounds. Not only we're not only focused on only business studies, but we also take in uh, graduates from information systems, um, mathematics and computer science, accounting and management. So when all of them, all these graduates come in, including economics, law, education from other universities too, and when they come in, they all they make up one cohort. Uh, for the for the particular year, and they uh, they rotate around the bank to the different business units. So during the presentation, you would you have seen uh, Mr. Ito I take you through uh, the different business units, in, in, including internal audit, Paramount Banking, Retail Bank, uh, Human Resources, etc. Et so the graduates uh, rotate around the bank for twelve months, but most of the time they 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 spend during the the graduate rotation in, in our branches, doing retail banking, opening customer accounts, uh, saving customers, um, experiencing how it is like at the front line. Uh, so you do not feel that this not, we do not say that or an accounting student will come in and start doing accounting or start focusing on audit or straight into IT. But our graduates come in and experience a diverse um, workforce here and, and experience. They experience the banking, how, how it is like to serve customers in the bank before going back into IT audit. So when you are an auditor, internal auditor, sitting in the internal audit business unit, and when someone asks you, you would, you would know how, how, how to serve customers and you, would, you, you know that experience. And when staff from the, the branches ask you for anything, you are able to support our staff in, in the branches, uh, because some the majority of our staff are located in the remote areas and mostly retail banking. So we have to ensure our graduates understand the business, understand how to do uh, banking. So when our staff in Karkar Island or our staff in, in uh, Henganofi sends a request to you in IT or you in, in internal audit, you are able to assist our staff in those areas and they are able to save our customers uh, industrial and remote areas. So that's that's uh, what we would like to have, uh, uh, have uh, make our graduates understand and know that you will not come in and uh, start performing auditing or HR or IT, but within the 12 months, you, you get to experience uh, the banking, the banking experience. Thank you, Mr. Gao. Anyone else with any question? The mic will be passed around. This, this is the time where you ask questions. And after the 12 months, our doing payments in.
not so every man sorry hello sorry thank you mr gao uh, did you get what I, I said in the last bit yes we had you all right, yes, yeah, so it's mostly to have our graduates experience the banking culture before uh, setting into payment and rotating the bank. Thank you. Any other students with any questions? Yeah, force. Any staff that would like to ask a question? We'll just give a bit more time also for the other students who are on Zoom that are interacting with the industry partners. can join those rooms and we can ask the questions to them. I will now hand it over to Mr. Jonathan Yawa, my co-host, to end the Zoom session. Thank you, Mr. Gao from Bank of South Pacific. Thank you, Mrs. Leka and Ms. Sariman from Lay International Hotel, and also Mr. Jonathan Kabata from Deloitte to join us at the Divino University Virtual Care Expo question and answer session. 
live audiences and online viewers, please make welcome the Dean of the Faculty of Business and Informatics, Associate Professor Martin Daniel. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, for, for, for those who are uh, in the auditorium and those who are joining us uh, online uh, through Facebook, uh, thank you to uh, the MC uh, for facilitating uh, this uh, session today. It has been a wonderful week for all of us, uh, for staff and students, and for our potential students future potential students and, and, and industry partners, friends uh, who have joined us uh, during the week, uh, not just today, but uh, starting uh, Monday to uh, today. Uh, this afternoon, I, on behalf of the uh, DW President, Father, Professor Father Philip Gibbs, uh, DW Management, uh, I would like to um, uh, thank all our partners uh, who have joined us, uh, all the partners from all the faculties uh, who have joined us on Monday up until today uh, for sharing inform vital information for our current students and our potential future students. Uh, and also our, uh, our staff sharing information about uh, their graduate uh, uh, career pathways, uh, how to apply uh, into different uh, job opportunities that they have in their various organizations and what they expect from our graduates. I think they have shared very important information uh, for our students, uh, both current and uh, future students, and maybe staff as well. I also would like to thank all the faculties, including staff and students who have uh, contributed and put in a lot of time and a lot of effort into uh, making this week a success. Uh, in the past, we had uh, uh, open days, and last year we had virtual open day, and we only did that in a, on a Saturday, and that was quite a lot for, for everyone. So this year we decided to have uh, the Career Expo, from open day to a Career Expo, and to run that uh, throughout the week, so that faculties are given uh, a day, enough time, uh, to showcase what uh, they do uh, at a department level, and of course to, uh, to, to, to seek information from uh, our industry partners who are our employers uh, for our graduates. So thank you to all the faculties and staff and students for all the efforts and time spent uh, 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 in trying to make this week a success for, uh, for all of us, for everyone. So I think we should give a hand to all of, all of us uh, for giving the time and effort. Uh, we also thank uh, Mr. Irie and the CRT team uh, for helping us uh, in uh, getting our career expo online uh, so that we have participants from, uh, from different parts of the country and especially our industry uh, partners who were able to join us and share some of that vital information for, uh, which is necessary for, for us. So we thank Ms. Irie and the team, uh, CLT team. We also thank uh, DW Marketing for assisting us uh, in getting our videos, especially for the deans and the president. Uh, uh, so uh, we thank uh, Maggie and uh, Helen and the team uh, in uh, marketing division uh, in assisting us, us with the videos. Uh, DW Finance for assisting us uh, in terms of uh, uh, finance uh, to provide refreshments. Uh, so we thank DW Finance for, uh, for, for, for that assistance in that regard. And everyone who have contributed. If I have not mentioned anyone, names, okay, but I believe a lot of students and staff 
uh, have contributed in many ways in getting this uh, week a success. Uh, it's the first time to run in a week, uh, but I think from the lessons that we have learned, uh, we can do better uh, next year going forward. I also would like to thank uh, Ms. Matiaden Lugan uh, for, and the FBI team for taking the lead in organizing uh, the Career Expo, and of course, with assistance from the different faculty uh, reps. So, uh, Matiaden, thank you for taking the lead on behalf of FBI, Faculty of Business and Informatics. Uh, and, and your team in taking the lead in this year's uh, Career Expo. And who, uh, the, the next faculty uh, can, can take on board some of the lessons that we have learned uh, and do better the way it needs to be done better. So with this, uh, thank you uh, everyone uh, for your time uh, in this auditorium to provide a live audience. Uh, and thank you for those who have joined us uh, from within the university and of course from other parts of the country uh, for joining us on Zoom and, and of course on uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, thank you for, for your participation, for your patience and, and for sharing with us your time uh, to make this event a success. So thank you all and have a nice uh, weekend coming up. Thank you, Associate Professor Martin Daniel, for the closing remarks. Before we end our program, may I speak on behalf of the Diwan World University staff and students. We convey our sincere condolences to the family of late Deputy Prime Minister Sam Basil. We join the rest of Papua New Guinea in mourning the loss of one of our PNG's great leaders. Observe a moment of silence. All right, thank you live audiences and online viewers for participating. And we hope you enjoy this program. This brings us to the end of the 2022 Divine World University Virtual Career Expo. Wishing you all a pleasant afternoon and a safe weekend ahead. Thank you. <laughs>